I think I think he can. I think I don't. But you know, I really don't know. But I, you know, I mean, I mean, so I don't know if he's comfortable or not. Junior middle, I don't know. I don't know if he had trouble making 47. So it's a hard question for me to answer. But I mean, Marquez can't fight at 50. It's too small. I mean, he could fight at 50, but by the time it's fight time, it's 155. You can't carry that weight for 20, 10, 12 rounds. Maybe they just agree at that that weight, and Marquez comes in lighter. Have you seen this card? But yeah. what what guy does that today? Yeah. Right you know what I mean? Okay. What were your thoughts? Because he just mentioned uh, Canelo Chavez Jr. What's happening in that fight? Canelo. I think he beats him. Canelo beats him. I think right now, at that weight, no one's gonna beat Canelo right now. That'd be a good fight. That'd be a, that. To me, that's a pickle. That's that'd want to determine both their greatness. You know what I mean? If it happened. Hey, if Sugar Ray Leonard could come from welterweight champion and fight Marvin Hagler, and I think that Canelo should come from junior middleweight champion and fight Triple G. But that's the difference today, man. These guys today, you know, they want a guy to come in two pounds. Yeah. It takes the fun out of the sport. Yeah. How would he do at 168? Who's that? Who would he fight? Mm. Who would he fight at 68? He can fight those guys. He can come in at 62 and beat them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to be 68 for those guys. Personally. And do you know trainer uh, Hernandez, uh, the brother of Gennaro Hernandez? I probably know him by face. Like if you say the name, I probably won't, but face. I have an interesting thing to uh, talk about. He says that Gennady Golovkin is so great, he beats Marvin Hagler. I actually the stuff does he smoke, does he grow it himself? <laughs> or does he buy it from these legal, legal stores today? <laughs> Marvin Hagler's a great fighter, man. There's no doubt about that. He's a great fighter. And mean. Marvin Hagler was mean, man. The only way you're going to beat Marvin Hagler, you have to be a hell of a boxer like Ray Leonard. Do you think it's possible that Gennady would have been competitive? You know who would have knocked Gennady out? Carlos Monzon. <laughs> Big middleweight. One of the greatest middleweights. He don't get the he, he don't he don't get the recognition. Yeah. But Carlos Manzon was a bad man. I think that I, I'm gonna go with Manzon for the simple fact, not because of the the styles. He fought better opposition. Mm -hmm. Benny Briscoe would have beat Triple G. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a feeling. Benny Briscoe No. He fought. He fought Rodrigo Valdez. He fought Manzon twice, once to a draw. I mean, uh, Benny Briscoe would have beat Triple G. Yeah. Does that matter being a world champion? Does that validate the greatness of being a world champion? I don't know back in the days there was maybe better competition, but nowadays does that validate the greatness of being a world champion? Or is it real, like maybe a one-time thing, a one-hit wonder, so to speak? Exactly. So I, I, I don't I don't believe you got to be a champion to be a great fighter. But there's so many great fighters who never got a chance to fight for the world title. That were great fighters. If you get a chance, go home and look at a guy named Henry Hank and watch his defensive moves. He keeps his left hand right here. And you can't, you could, he fought, he was a middleweight, but he fought light heavyweights. He fought uh, Howard Johnson, he fought uh, Dick Tiger, he fought Georgie Benton, he fought um, Bob Fort, uh, I said Howard Johnson, he fought them all. Like yes, and he was a middleweight, and they sh and you, they show him, and they throw punches, and he's standing right in front of him, and they can't hit him. <laughs> I think the shoulder has been out for a long time. Joe Gans used to do the shoulder roll. You know what I mean? But Joe Benton, to me, you say Joe Gans, you know Joe Gans, the early 1900s. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was doing the shoulder roll. One more. Oh. Yeah, they say he was one of the he was one of the first ones to start to start the scientific uh, yeah. you know, boxing. And and, and uh, uh, Georgie, Georgie was the best, man. Not only as a tra great trainer, one of the best middleweights around. And if you watch the fight with him and Georgie and Hurricane Carter, Hurricane Carter threw 10 punches and missed 12. <laughs> he had Georgie on the ropes. And he was throwing punches, and Georgia never lift his left hand up. He hit him with one right hand. These, these are great fighters, man. 
I see this guy at Ralph's. I see this guy everywhere, man. You're sweating, buddy. This guy eats, he eats Wheaties in the morning. Why so, are you sweating? Um, they got me working today, man. They're making me earn my money today. You definitely have a boxing IQ when you start bringing up Joe Diaz from early 1900s. You know, he was. Call it the sweet science. He was the first black world champion. Yes, I know that. Mm -hmm. Jack Johnson was the first black heavyweight champion. But Jack Johnson had balls. He had three white wives in the early 1900s. You gotta be a bad man to do that. You gotta be a bad man. You <laughs> couldn't even look at him. He had three white had wives. Three. Given zero. <laughs> what they having a press here today? Yeah, for Joe. Oh, I'm glad, they, I'm glad they told us. We had no idea. I know I'm going for lunch. <laughs> we'll take a sandwich and run. <laughs> Buddy, what's your take on the whole catch weight for Canelo Chavez? You didn't want to come up for Gennady. He's going up a little higher. For I think I think he's really trying that bigger weight so he can get ready for Gennady. So you fight a guy like Chavez, you make a whole lot of money, you win, and then you say, okay, now nah, I fight Triple J. How do you feel about him fighting Chavez? Supposedly Chavez is in the best shape of his career. Supposedly. Well, look, he did. What, Chavez did one good thing. He, he got Nacho Berrison. Yeah, Nacho, true. Nacho's a no nonsense guy. Chavez don't do the right thing, you know. Nacho be like, get the hell out of here. But you know, Nacho trained his pop, right? Yeah, he trained a lot. He tra he, Nacho's a great trainer, man. He doesn't get the recognition he deserves in the United Absolutely, States. Absolutely, I agree. I think he's a very. He had the, the other kid. Uh, was it Ricardo Lopez? Yeah, that is it. Yeah. Great, great work, great trainer, man. Uh, Nacho Berrison. You think you're gonna mesh well, Nacho Berrison and Chavez? I mean, Berrison's more of a counter puncher. I think that I think that Berrison he makes guys adjust. I mean, he had you know Marquez, him and Pacquiao can fight eight times. It's eight times is gonna be a war. Yeah. And eight times is going to be pick him. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's great at making, getting his fighters to make adjustments. <laughs> so I think that by Chavez getting him and listening to him, he's going to make it a, a great fight. Interesting fight. But I still think Canelo's going to beat him in the long run. And if Canelo does beat Chavez Jr., will we finally get the fight we all want? We, I hope so. You should be asking Canelo this. Right? <laughs> That's awesome. But one thing, though, Canelo, I mean, Chavez, he quit once. If you quit once, you'll quit again. Montana, right? Huh? Yeah. You quit once, you quit again. If the, he gets too hot in the kitchen, you know what I mean, I don't care who you got in the corner. If it gets too hot, start looking for an exit sign. Is this more of a money fight or is this an actual fight? I couldn't. You know what? I couldn't answer that. One. Yeah. I mean, basically today, it's it's always about money, but. My opinion, but um, who knows, man? Who knows? But I think I think Canelo wants to test himself against a guy with a name that's bigger before he goes up to fight Triple G. That's my opinion. Buddy, does Chavez survive with the fans if he quits in against Canelo? Because I mean, he quit against Fumara, but he was a public fighter. This is, has a lot more attention, pay per view. Canelo, I mean, you know, Mexico, Mexican Mexico. fans are they? I think they're some of the best boxing fans. You know what I mean? They stick with you. I mean, they stuck with they fought with his father when his father quit. You know what I mean? So you know, they die hard fans. They got to give it to them. So, and he's fighting another Mexican fighter. So you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. I yeah. think it'd be a little more like, you, you know, like a little more on my straight Put out the way. So where the hell did he go? Three rounds. So okay. Three. 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 Like a tree. Three. Tree. Tree, yeah. <laughs> Do you think if Chavez Jr. was to pull this upset off, do you think he is the cap child in boxing if he can pull this off? If if was the fifth, we'd all be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see I can't see him beating Canelo. Me either. I can't see him beating. Anything's possible? Right. Who thought Joe Smith would knock out Bernard Hopkins? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I didn't. What's your thoughts of that fight? I think it was a bad fight to take. I know Joe Smith. Yeah. You know, he's very, very strong and determined. And Bernard, you know, he's almost my age. Right. I mean, so, you know. I think he wanted a way out of yeah. And the reason why I say that is because when you look at the replay, he didn't land on his, on his feet. And he got up and the first thing he started doing was flipping. Right. Uh, I think he wanted a way out. I just saw the ending of the fight. I didn't see like the whole fight. Uh -huh. I just saw, I didn't know what happened earlier. Right. I just saw the ending of it. 
Because I was at fights in Vegas and we was watching that. We caught the end of it. We caught him going out the ring. Big G, baby! <laughs>